What's up guys, welcome to Love Shack Entertainment and today we're bringing you a deck profile video which actually will be our final deck profile video of the year. Uh, now this one's going to be a little bit different because it's not a tier level deck uh, in any capacity anymore. However, we came up with the idea after talking to somebody who just basically brought up the point saying, oh I wonder how well this deck would work in the current format and whether or not there was uh, any ability to play a competitive variant of the deck that would at least stand a chance against maybe you know, some tier 2, tier 3 decks. Uh, now, before I reveal the deck, uh, I just want to disclaim that uh, this is not a perfect build, and it's simply something that uh, is in the works, something I've been trying to toy around with myself, but it's more of just a side project because I do enjoy the deck, and I do think it's uh, fun and can be kind of effective if played right. So with that out of the way, we're going to get started, and I will also mention that... Um, there may or may not be 15 or six, uh, 16 or 17 cards in the extra deck simply because a few of them are options, meaning just giving you a little bit more of an idea of what you could or couldn't use um, in these situations. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. And so, to let you know, and this should easily, I imagine, give it away, uh, this deck is a Macro Rabbit variant, although it is slightly different than the previous Macro Rabbit decks, uh, at least when Rescue Rabbit was at a number other than one, and the deck was still competitively viable. So, let's start here with three Sabersaurus. Uh, now, some people have questioned whether or not I want to play three Cabo's Owls and three Sabersaurus. Um, I did test that, and I was drawing into way too many normals, and it just wasn't worth that much of an investment for me. Um, especially because if the deck is going to be effective and make power plays, you really need to be able to get them off sooner rather than later. Um, and it's not easy to do when your hand is stuck with normals. So, three Sabersaurus is what I start with here. Um, and then, uh, as always, three Tour Guide of the Underworld, which I'm hoping doesn't get hit because of Burning Abyss, but who knows, the new list will be coming out uh, within the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, it's a great card, obviously. It was essential when Rabbit was at, a, at two or three. Um, now that it's at one, it's even more essential to be able to reuse it or to be able to combo off of Gold Sarcophagus. Uh, more effectively than you can when you know you don't have those rabbits to draw into as easily. Um, we got two Trigodia. This card really doesn't see too much play anymore, but I find it really good in here simply because of the combos that you can do. If you do have dead level fours in the hand or level threes, you can use Trag's effect to take control of them and make some different plays. Uh, it's also good if you're playing, I don't know, Burning Abyss, uh, if you're playing against a deck like that, because you got to use tour guides and other things that you can use to. Uh, at least temporarily use those monsters as material and, and delay them going to the grave. Um, I've got two card card D. Uh, I've also thought about upping that to three simply because the draw power that it gives you is actually really important. Um, this deck definitely plays an anti-meta style um, and it's very trap heavy as you'll see in a couple of minutes. Um, so getting that stuff quickly, getting your resources so that when you do manage to put a Lagia on the board or a Dolka or whatever it is that you're looking to do, um, you have the resources to protect it and back it up. So card cover is good at two, and I've considered putting them at three, but it really depends on your own preference and whether or not that's uh, something that you think would work for you. Um, two, now this is going to be a questionable card, and I'm, I'm prepared for the backlash for this. Two Reborn Tengu. I wish the card was at three. I really do. Um, I, I do understand that there's some reasons that it can't, especially with the new Sync Run stuff coming out. But I think it's such a good card. And, and like, the fact that the format operates as fast as it does in a deck like this, which is automatically going to be slower because you need to set up your plays. Even if you do play just the two Tengus, if one of them gets removed from the field or your opponent gets around it, the fact that you can put another one out from the deck and use it to speed up your plays or have another level four on the field for combos and things like that is just a very helpful um, piece to the deck. The fact that it's also 1700 and I run Forbidden Lance and stuff like that, I can use it to swing over some stuff. Um, it's something I was just trying out as a tech, and surprisingly it's worked really well, because when someone suggested it to me, I was like, oh, I don't think it's going to be worth it, I think it's going to be a dead draw. Um, obviously Tengu was at one point a staple in almost everything when it was at three. Um, so really that's your choice, whether or not you think it's worth playing, but I like it, and I think that it actually does enhance the deck, which is different than I originally anticipated. Um, so we got one Rescue Rabbit, which is obvious, I wish it was at two, because then, you know, you could play the Kabas and the Saber Sources, pretty much. Self-explanatory, I'm not even going to spend too much time going into it. You get your Saber Sauruses, you can banish this with Gold Sarcophagus, and you can do all sorts of combos with uh, Tour Guide to get it out quicker. Um, and then 
you know, it's Rescue Rabbit. If you do dead draw it, it sucks, but at least you can you can use it with Trag, or maybe you can overlay with it uh, if, if you absolutely have to, although I hate to have to do that. One Thunder King, um, it's a decent card, especially if you're playing against decks like Clifforts. If you can go first and get this out, it definitely does slow them down. Um, I feel like Dino Rabbit decks have always been able to maximize Thunder King's potential. Um, I like Denko Seca as well. I don't have any at the moment, but with cards like Macrocosmos and stuff like that, if you can set up a field control, Denko Seca does a job really well. Um, if you don't want to play Thunder King, you could definitely use Denko Seca in here, probably at two. Um, or even if you do want to use Thunder King and would rather not use Reborn Tengus, that's another option. Uh, but that's up to you and your own personal preference. Uh, we got one Scar Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. Um, it's a tour guide target, so it replaces the role of Sangan, really, in this deck. Um, if you can open with tour guide and you summon it, and then you overlay, summon, uh, use Levier, take Rabbit if you manage to get a Gold Sark, and then at the end of the turn, Skarm allows you to search for another tour guide, and you can do that play next turn as well. Um, now that's one of the few reasons I did consider playing the other rabbit targets, but it's something that's going to need a little bit more work. Um, the thing about Skarm is obviously you can't really play it if you don't have, you know, other Burning Abyss, but Torghead negates the effect. And worst case scenario, it does have 2,000 defense, so you can, you can sit on it if you got to wait for some draws or something. So all around it's, it's proved to be pretty useful. Um, one Grand Mole, I mean, this gets around some stuff. It's very disruptive. It's still a good card. I know a lot of decks like should always play it, or at least have... Uh, consider playing it in the past. Um, it's very useful. It's always been good in Dino Rabbit, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not even going to spend a lot of time on this. I do think in here it's definitely warrants its place. Um, this is what I'm going to probably get some criticism for. If consider taking it out just because of how heavy the trap lineup is. Um, I was interested in playing it simply because a lot of people don't expect it anymore, and the deck does rely on um, build control plays like that. Thing about Gores is if Macro's out, Defissure's out, uh, it's obviously dead. And if it's not out, then I have to specifically play poorly in order to be able to set up Gores, which almost makes it obvious that it's there. Um, you really shouldn't have to do that in a deck, especially like this, where your plays are so important. Um, more than likely going to end up taking this out. Uh, I don't think it's. Ju I just don't think that it fits uh, what I'm really trying to do with the deck. Even though I do think obviously that Gores is a good card in the right place uh, in this format, it just doesn't hold up as well as it was before. So that's the monster lineup. And then we go right to three MST. Um, I mean, you got Lances, but like, it's so important. I mean, Vanity's Emptiness shuts down any plays that you can make. Um, you know, Fiendish Chain can hurt you <clears throat> if people are still playing that. You can hit a Pendulum maybe, depending on, you know, whether or not it's gonna stop a play, chain it to a Scout or something, a uh, Tool rather. And uh, it's just a good card. I mean, you could play it at two inside one, but right now I just kind of am comfortable having it at three so that I don't get, uh, you know, hurt too much by other other cards that are going to slow me down. Uh, two Forbidden Lance. Uh, maybe three, really. Um, it, it could definitely go to three. Um, it's really good with, you know, Lagia, Dolka, whatever it is you bring out. Make sure it's protected. Uh, Thunder King, Tengu benefit from it. Uh, Jurak Guaba, which I have considered playing, trying in here in some capacity, also benefits from Lance. So there's a lot of different uses for it, and obviously uh, it's been a staple in the Dino Rabbit deck for a long time, uh, and I tried to stay to that formula at least as best I could while adapting to fit some you know newer format things. Uh, two Pot of Duality. Yeah, you special summon a lot, but setup is key, and Duality into Card Car is a really good play. Duality into... Uh, Trigodia or, you know, Gold Sark, anything like that. There's so many combos that you can do with it, and it just enhances the deck's speed and enhances the deck's consistency more than anything else. So that's what's really important about it. Uh, Dimensional Fissure, obviously. Uh, the card's actually really good. I mean, it's one of the few cards that can make the deck viable if you open up with the right hand, because this hurts uh, Burning Abyss, this hurts Clifforts, not <clears throat> not as much as it does hurt other things. Should alls as well get, get badly hurt by this. Uh, so it's a really good card. Uh, I'd like to see it come to another uh, number other than one. I think it would help the deck a little bit. But again, I understand there's a lot more uh, that has changed in the game since when that was at that number. Um, so, Staples, Regeki, good card. Especially when you have Macro and E-Fissure. So if you do Nuka Field and Banish stuff, you don't have to worry about the effects triggering. <clears throat> Mind Control, which is a card that doesn't see as much play as it used to, but it's obviously really good in here, especially if level 4s are played or level 3s, so it works well against Burning Abyss, it also works well against rogue decks and rogue matchups, 
Um, and I have a couple of synchros in the extra deck that uh, also, if I do take a tuner, uh, that I can do some synchroing. So it, it's all around works pretty well. It is one of those cards that I side out if I'm playing against a deck like Cliff Forts, but if I'm playing against Burning Abyss, um, I'd happily take, you know, a graph or something like that, put it underneath, you know, a Zen mains, and at least hold off from the opponent getting its effects for a little while. Uh, Soul Charge, uh, yeah, I play macro and defissure, so I can understand the uh, confusion as to why, but it's really good, especially now, because if your Saber Sources are in the graveyard, you can bring this back and you can make another one of the Dino Xyz, which is part of the reason I find it to be so useful. Uh, so it's a good card, and you just play selectively with it, and um, really, it's about as self-explanatory as it is. It just takes the place of Monster Reborn, but Monster Reborn, uh, I didn't really like to play in the deck simply because of, you know, everything getting banished. This is more like, uh, if I don't open macro or defissure with them both being at one, I make a Lockia, I can control the plays, and then next turn, if I have it, I can I can make another one. So, that's the reasoning behind that. Book of Moon, I'm not going to bother explaining. Uh, Gold Sarcophagus, obviously, is important. Banish Rabbit, you can summon Tour Guide, you can get your combo plays off right away. So, that's the uh, spell lineup. And the deck is trap heavy, but I think it could afford to be a little bit more trap heavy, so I'd also like some suggestions on that, perhaps. Uh, two Dimensional Prison, really good card, gets around Chidal's, uh, Winda gets hurt from it. Uh, Cliff Force, to a lesser extent, I suppose, can be hindered by it as well. Um, I'm not really sure about Burning Abyss, I guess, Dante's, but they have a lot of answers to stuff. Um, really just a good trap, good protective trap in here. Uh, Fiendish Chain at two, I've always liked it. Um, it... it does better than Breakthrough Skill in this particular deck simply because sometimes you can't afford to take extra damage and you need to stop yourself from being attacked, which is why, um, you know, it's just really useful at what it does. Um, Macro Cosmos, obviously it's called Macro Rabbit. It's a really good card. It's kind of overpowered, I think, almost. Like, if it was at any number other than one, it would be significantly problematic. And the fact that it works like Vanity's Emptiness about, you know, when you want to use it, you set it up after you got all your plays. So that's a really good card. It's really, really effective against Yang Zing uh, and Shidals as well. Um, I do want to play Vanity's Emptiness in here. I just don't have any at the moment. So um, more than likely would make some adjustments to put into Vanity's Emptiness because it does obviously combo really well with Macro. Uh, Compulse, Bottomless, Torrential, all self-explanatory. Um, all good cards, all control cards. Um, Phoenix Wing, I'm playing it at one right now. Um, I don't benefit from the effects and the discards as much as you do in decks like Burning Abyss, so I can understand why some people might say, oh, why would you play this? But it's useful, it does act as a counter to things, and sometimes I have dead cards in my hand. Uh, plus, I can trigger Skarm with it, so it just works out pretty well uh, as one of those cards that does fill a nice, uh, I guess, you know, niche within the deck. And, of course, uh, Solemn Morning, which is another good one. Um... You know, you don't need to explain the Solemn Warning. Uh, Solemn Scolding is one I've considered, too, simply because a lot of times I do have stuff face up. But there are instances in which I set deep prisons and stuff like that, so it's really dependent on, uh, you know, whether or not I want to risk the dead draws. And so far, I haven't found that to be necessary. Um, but if you feel like you want to try it and see how it is, then by all means... Um, so, to Lagia, I can usually... Uh, the thing is, when I end up putting Guavas in, which I think I'm going to do, this is a lot easier to make. Uh, it's still a really, really powerful card. Even if the deck itself is not great anymore, Lagia itself is still a broken card in design. And if it was able to be put out more consistently, uh, I do think it would still be a problem. The problem is, there is no way to do that. So, uh, one Dolka doesn't really do quite as much as it used to, but it's still... Still can hit some stuff pretty hard, like Shadals and stuff, and it's good to have. Uh, Yang Zing is another one I found this works well against. <clears throat> Exiton, another really good card, obviously. What else do we got here? Sorry, I had my pile get a little messed up. Uh, obviously, Silent Honor Arc, Gaga Ga Cowboy, uh, which is just a game finisher. Uh, Black Ship, really just use this in certain situations, obviously, because if stuff is getting banished, I, uh, I can't use its effect. But it's still good to have for those rare scenarios. Um, this is a questionable one. But I like it simply because of what it does to decks that mean uh, low attack monsters. And you can pretty much swing for some significant damage with it if you're hitting up against Burning Abyss or Shadal. So if you run over a Falco and then detach and summon it back and then you even run it over again for another 28, it's not like it's going to get its effect a second time. So you can do some significant damage. I don't go into it that often, but I do not have... Um, really something that I could see as an immediate need to put in its place. So for now, I'm just going to leave it as is until I uh, have some questionable results. 
otherwise. Uh, Mech Quipped Engineer, really good rank 3. Zen Mains, another one. Um, I just don't have Fortune Tune currently, otherwise I'd probably play that instead. Uh, Acid Golem, it's a beater. You know, I don't use it very often, but it's helpful when you do want it. Uh, Leviathan Dragon, another good one, uh, especially because it works well with Skarm. It, it allows me to search Tour Guide. Um, Levier, probably the best one in the deck as far as rank 3s go. Number 48, Shadow Lick, which is a cool card. 2300, you can put a token on the board and it's, uh, it can't be attacked while the token is there. Um, I don't go into it too much either, but it does help to stall sometimes, although Fortune Tune is probably better. And then uh, I got Black Rose as well, simply because if I am playing against a deck that's going to use tuners and I want to uh, mind control, I have that option there, Black Rose, because the space is there. So. So pretty much it's a rough draft deck, but it's a lot of fun, and I wanted to put something together as far as Dino Rabbit went that allowed me to, you know, uh, experiment with a deck that, you know, obviously anyone that remembers probably 2010, 2011 was, you know, a very devastating deck that was uh, considered, you know, tier one. Now it's not because so much of it's been hit, but it's still a fun deck, and I think that it's, uh, you know, if you want to try out it on your own, let me know what your builds are like, let us know, uh, you know, what changes you'd suggest, and we will, uh, you know, maybe feature those changes in a future video if we do an updated deck profile. So, hope you're all enjoying your holidays, and we will see you next time from Love Shack Entertainment.